In the most challenging of times, we have an urgent choice to make. Will we find ways to keep moving into the light? Or will we allow layers of negativity to creep over us and those around us? Those questions may be simplistic, but the choices and tasks required within their answers can be some of the most difficult of our lives. When we're suffering, it can seem easier to stay down than to climb or lift ourselves back up. But there is a way, a path which can help us rise. And that path is being a wave of light for others, being a lamp in the darkness. Shanti Deva, an 8th century Buddhist monk, philosopher, and teacher, wrote those words to humanity as part of the prayer of the Bodhisattva. May I be a guard for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles. And for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening, enduring like the earth and sky, until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. In Mahayana Buddhism, a bodhisattva is an enlightened being who strives to develop and live within the four divine abodes of loving-kindness, metta, compassion, karuna, equanimity, upeka, and empathetic joy, mudita. The loving-kindness of metta is about benevolence, goodwill, and a wish to bring happiness and well-being to others. The compassion of Karuna is about the desire to remove harm and suffering from others' lives as well as having self-compassion in our own. The joy of Mudita is about altruistic joy, finding happiness in the happiness of others, finding pleasure and delight in their well-being. The equanimity of Upeka is about remaining peaceful and with a free and clear mind in the face of the eight worldly winds. Loss and gain, sorrow and happiness, praise and criticism, and honor and dishonor. As you can see, the way of the Bodhisattva, a path out of the darkness and to enlightenment, is through helping to ease suffering. Yes, our own, but especially the suffering of others. This ancient approach is supported by modern science. Research shows that the act of helping others releases all kinds of feel-good chemicals in the brain and lowers stress hormones, giving us a helper's high and leaving us craving more. It eases our stress, lowers our levels of anxiety, gives us a sense of control, and helps us find meaning and purpose in a world where those may appear to be lacking. But what if you believe you can't be the light for others, at least not right now? It's okay, and an important realization of self-awareness and boundary setting. But within that self-imposed limitation, be mindful of your thoughts and actions and take care not to cause or add to someone else's suffering unnecessarily or carelessly. Because when you decline the universe's invitation to be a purveyor of light, you must also be cautious not to be a bearer of darkness or even dimming shade. It is a valuable gift indeed to be able to reflect on Shanti Deva's prayer and offer whatever you can. And you don't need to be a Buddhist striving toward enlightenment or following the way of the Bodhisattva. 
because anything you do to ease the suffering of other beings makes you a beacon in dark times, helping shine a bright light for those who may be struggling on a dim, difficult path, and for yourself as well.